In this video, I'm going to share my method for finding and learning all the notes on the fretboard using this one simple shape and one rule. Now there are tons of great videos online that demonstrate some well-known methods such as learning the notes of the E and the A string and then going two up and two across or two up and three across to find the same note in a different place. This is great and it works well, but it only allows you to find a single note at a time. While learning guitar myself, I figured out an alternative method that gave me better results, so I'm going to share this with you and you can decide if it works for you. First, let's be clear that we are concentrating only on finding the natural notes, so we can ignore the sharps and the flats. This is simply because sharps and flats are easily worked out from knowing the positions of each of the natural notes. To get a flat, you move this way, and to get a sharp, you move that way. We'll also assume that you already know the notes of the low E string, on the basis that this is one of the fundamental things you learn first, especially if you're learning scales like pentatonics, as this is where you anchor your scale patterns depending on which key you're playing. Here's how my method works. The first thing I did was look for a pattern. That's what humans do. We're visual creatures, and a simple repeating shape is a lot easier to remember and recall than 78 individual note positions. One pattern that caught my eye was this cluster of four notes, B, C, E and F. So I looked for where else that pattern repeats on the fretboard, but I also noticed it appears in a different kind of skewed shape, here and here. And there are also a few other fragments dotted around too, so it's not really much to go on. Or is it? Let's take another look at that cluster. And here we're going to add the notes A, D and G on top like this to make up all seven natural notes. And to make this easy to remember, we can call this shape a house with a chimney stack. Now let's take a look at the notes inside this shape, because that's what we're really here for. My technique for remembering these notes might be different to yours, but I'll tell you what I do, and you can decide if that works for you. BC is a common acronym, before Christ. I'm not religious, but everyone knows BC. E and F, I remember these because E and F are, well, how you'd pronounce F. So I actually find this cluster of four very easy to remember. For A, D and G, I use a simple mnemonic, always do good, A, D, G. Again, make up your own if you like, but remember these notes in this shape. Now this shape repeats like this, either above or below, but always in the same way, connected at the C and the G. I'll get back to this in a minute as I show you how to apply it. Let's find a starting point on the fretboard. To make the first one easy, we'll grab B and C on the low E string and overlay our shape like this. This only gets us part way across the fretboard, so we can repeat the pattern like we did just above. Now before I go any further, if you recall at the start, I said there were two parts to this technique, a shape and a rule. Well the rule is that anything that crosses the B string gets shifted one fret to the right. This is a well-known quirk of the way guitars are tuned. It's a pain, but that's just the way it is. So this G and everything after it gets shifted one fret, like this. Let's do another one. We'll take this D and overlay our shape, positioning the D in the shape right over the D on the fretboard. We then repeat the pattern, and just as before, we then shift everything from the B string onwards over one fret. And here's another. We'll take this A and place our shape pattern on top like we did before. Add the repeat shape, and then everything from the B upwards gets shifted to the right. And here you can see the skewed shape we saw before, but now we understand why it's skewed. Have a go yourself using the shape and the rule. But before I end this, let me show you another tip to make it even faster while using this technique. Obviously it's not very efficient to start mapping every note based off the low E string and working across the fretboard from one side to the other. The notes on this side of the fretboard will take longer to figure out as you mentally overlay the shapes. So when using this technique, practice working backwards from the high E string so that you have fewer steps to identify the note you're after. Just don't forget that when you do this, move everything below the B string to the left. Thanks for watching, I hope this helps.